Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to cover four different Scientology articles. <laughs> I've already shot this video once, but apparently I turned off my mic so there was no audio. So I'm going to try this again. Uh, so I'm going to start off with an article from ScientologyMoneyProject.com and this is titled Scientologist Address Management Director Claims an Active Mailing List of 3.5 Million Names. Okay, so the Address Management Director is Joel Beaton and he is in an interview with a guy named Richard Romano of what they think and they're just doing an interview about mail. It's very boring. And the clip that's actually on here is 3.9 seconds long. And Joel Beaton actually makes this claim in the very early parts of this 3.9 second long interview section. Um, but the reason why this is such a big thing is that David Miscavige has been claiming for the past few years that, you know, Scientology is the fastest growing religion ever. You know, they have over 10 million people on their mailing list, yada, 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 all this stuff, right? Well, Joel Beaton just blew that right out of the water on June 26th of 2019. Now, this blog was... Uh, posted on June 27th. So this video clip was posted on June 26th and this blog came out the very next day. So people snatched that up and posted it very quickly. So Richard Romano is talking to Joel Beaton and what Joel Beaton actually states is 3.5 active names and 6 million overall, which still falls below that 10 million mark that David Miscavige is claiming, plus David Miscavige has been claiming 10 million plus, and this still falls below that. Um, so it is very much less than what David Miscavige has been saying. Now you're probably asking, well, why is that such a big deal? Well, it's because David Miscavige has been making this a huge selling point on Scientology's growth over all these years. And here's another factor that you have to add into that. The other factor that you add into that is people that are on the mailing list are just people that have wandered onto the site and taken the personality test maybe, or people that have been like wandered into an org at some point and just happened to give them their address and can't, ha can't get off this mailing list and they just keep getting mail from Scientology. These are not actually members of Scientology. These are just poor saps that happen to get on Scientology's mailing list. So moving on from there. Further down into this blog post, we get into David Miscavige claims. Now it it goes into this 50th anniversary of the Sea Org. In 1992, David Miscavige made some very hard-hitting claims. Because um, 1992 was a 25-year statistic. And he stated that he has done... He says, I had a calculation done based on our past 25 years to see, to see statistically where we will be in the next 25 years. Now, if we are to grow at the same yearly rate of expansion, by the year 2017, the Sea Org's 50th anniversary, this is what the Sea Org would be. And he gives off these numbers. He's saying that there will be 697,000 Sea Org members, 81 continental management to relay Sea Org intentions, 37,000 mission and field groups, 
4 billion book sales with 350 million books sold, 250,000 active auditors, and the well done auditing hours will be 2,739,000 a week in orgs and 6,250,000 a week, including field auditing. Now, that was in 1992. So, in 2017, at the 50th year anniversary <coughs> they post pretty much the same thing based on our progress over the past 25 years if the sea org continues the same yearly rate of expansion this is how big it will be this is at the 50th year and they give the exact same numbers so they didn't reach any of the benchmarks that David Miscavige proclaimed in 1992 by 2017. So this is just another comparison of exactly how they're not the fastest growing. You have this address director shooting David Miscavige's word down then you have David Miscavige's own words shooting himself down. So, there and again, they're not reaching these benchmarks like they're proclaiming they are. So, they are not the fastest growing religion. So, that's just a very short aside into how much shit they are full of. So, let's move on into another David Miscavige oops of the day. This one is going to come from Tony Ortega. Uh, Tony or Ortega. God, I can't talk today. Tony Ortega.org, also known as the Underground Bunker. This is written by Tony Ortega himself. It was posted on June 29th, 2019, and it is titled David Miscavige's Pet Projects Result in constant fundraising pressure. Now, this is no surprise to anybody that watches Scientology, that has been in Scientology, is currently in Scientology, anything like that. You have heard the constant pressures of money. Money is a constant theme in Scientology. Everybody knows it. Fundraising is constant and it is aggressive and it is also a never-ending need for money in Scientology it's pretty much like money and LRH are the gods of Scientology. Um, fundraising goes through cycles that are never ending from books to buildings and Scientology is, Scientologists are constantly bombarded for a, more, a need of more money. They are constantly with their hands out. So a tipster tipped off Tony Ortega to a Scientology mission in California's fundraising boldness in the fact that the River Park Mission in California actually started a GoFundMe account for the mission to go ideal. Just let that sink in. This mission actually posted a GoFundMe account so that they could go ideal. The tipster took screenshots of the page before it was taken down and the mission was begging the general public for $20,000. This is what the tipster had to say. I see increasing numbers of desperate and unusually very ill Scientologists using crowdsourcing like GoFundMe, but I don't recall seeing Scientology mission holder begging for money to go ideal. Isn't that what registrars are for? It sounds like the church even makes the missions pay for their signage. We have some internal demolition and reconstruction to do, some, some cosmetic improvements, landscaping, and of course, all the signage that comes from Scientology Mill and completes the image. Wow. Like seriously, they put up a go fund me. Like seriously, they were asking the general public to fund their ideal mission project. Just let that sink in. So let's talk about missions because we've talked. You've always hear about orgs and about advanced orgs and going ideal, but they don't really talk a whole lot about missions. 
And I'm not a former Scientologist. I've never been in Scientology. I'm just a watcher of Scientology. But missions are actually supposed to be like the money-making enterprise for Scientology. What they do is they are designed to bring in the public and get them sucked into the Scientology cult. And once they get the new recruits in, the plan is to get them in, get them started up the bridge. And then they pass them off onto larger orgs. And then those larger orgs pass them off to advanced orgs the whole while sucking them dry of their money. And all of that just equals more money for Scientology. So the missions are tiny, small orgs. They only provide a certain amount of sources. A certain amount of ser services and then they have to pass them off to bigger orgs so missions in David Miscavige's ideal org program are having to pay for their signage to make them more like spectacular and eye-grabbing and more appealing for the general public so River Park mission holder River Park's mission holder, his name is Tree Niebecker. I cannot make that up. Dude's first name is Tree, T-R-E-E, -E, Niebecker. Went on to GoFundMe, so let's read what his GoFundMe said. The River Park mission in Sacramento, California is celebrating its 50th year of continuous service. Originally the mission of Davis, we moved to Sacramento in 1988 and that necessitated a name change for obvious reasons. It wasn't the same city. Duh. Many are aware that our expansion and products over these 50 years is legendary, and if you don't know, trust me, it is. Our longevity alone tells you something. No, it just tells me that you've suckered a lot of people into becoming Scientologists. Scientology Missions International, also short SMI, has us on their list of the missions that are closest to achieving ideal standards this year. This is all with the eye of having enough space and that very modern and aesthetic look you all replicated, you see replicated from org to org and the missions that have been featured in various events. We are not all that far off as we have been at it for a while and the majority of it is done. Now we have the final push to wrap it up and frankly it comes down to not down to having the dinero. For those who do not know us, our mission is right in the heart of Sacramento, the capital of California in the USA. The city is very diverse and we have people on lines from all over the world. We have 21 dedicated staff members more than half been more than half been on staff that, that i'm reading their messed up grammar so longer than a decade some over 40 years we have five ot's and three clears five who have done superpower and two who have done l's seven staff are tech trained who we have our own auditor for the staff who are not clear, we have a trained establishment officer to help the staff win on post, and we are capable of delivering everything a mission has to offer year to year. We are always in the top 10 for U.S. missions. Okay, if you have all of this, and you are so wonderful that you're patting yourself on your back that you have all of this, why are you doing a GoFundMe? We are strongly allied to our org and our regional sister missions. We are constantly creating and involved in fourth dynamic campa campaigns. We are determined to fulfill. Uh, we are determined to fulfill all that a mission is meant to be, to flood people up both sides of the bridge to total freedom. God, I can't talk. We really do love what we do, and we are ready. To a, we are already a great mission. Now we are ready to take it to the next level. 
We are asking for $20,000 to help finish our upgrades. We are keenly aware that most of you are donating to a lot of causes in our constellation of organizations and campaigns. Thus, we, W-E-E, -E, hope that a lot of people pitching in a little will create this without it being a strain. For instance, if 200 people did $100 or 400 people did $50 and so on, it would get done easily. I am not opposed to big donations. That would be awesome, but this is a way to make it happen and not have to be a big donor. Just saying. We are lucky that we have a lot of talented volunteers that are donating their labor very generously at no cost except cookies and commendations. That helps a lot of a lot to stretch this money to cover materials, etc. Thanks in advance for helping, and if we caught you at a bad time, you can't flow anything right now, please consider forwarding this to some front, some of your friends. Much love, Tree Becker, Nebe Tree Nebecker Mission Holder. That is his GoFundMe. That is what he was begging for money. He's begging for $20,000 to get his mission to ideal status. Now, here's the thing. You have all these great things that you're proclaiming. You have 21 staff members that have all these credentials and yada, 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 and you could do all this wonderful stuff. Then why don't you have enough money to get your mission to ideal status? And you have all these people that are donating their time so you're not having to pay anybody. So all you're paying for is the material. Why aren't you at ideal status? Just a few thoughts there. Moving on. Now, the third article that I'm covering today is quite funny because the third and fourth articles are related. These are going to be covering the documentary Going Clear, which I have not watched yet. I do plan to watch it soon. But the first one that we're going to be covering is 16 Shocking Allegations in Scientology Documentary Going Clear. And then the fourth article is Scientology Reps Slam Going Clear after well-received Sundance debut. So the 16 shocking allegations we're going to go through first. We're going to break some of them down. Then we're going to talk about Scientology slamming it. And then we're going to wrap it up, guys. Okay, so this comes from... Huff Post. This was written by Aaron Whit Whitney and it was posted on December 6th of 2017. And we're going to go down to the first allegation LRH's Scientology creation story. This has been the most controversial thing about Scientology. I think most people can agree. Most people are like, what the what when they hear it. But they do a very condensed version of it. I'm going to do an even more condensed version of it. Basically, once you hit OT3, you get handed like these secret materials that are handwritten from LRH. Um, and they discuss um, the galactic dictator Xenu 75 million years ago. Uh, brought a bunch of people to the earth, put them in volcanoes, blew them up with atomic bombs. That's how the Thetans got here. We're all Thetans. We have Thetans attached to us. And that's pretty much the creation story of Scientology. Um, multiple Thetans crowd our bodies, and that's the sources of our anxiety and fears and all of that. Thetans jump into newborn bodies and that's what animates us and all of that kind of stuff. If you want to know more about that, I'm sure you could just Google Xenu. It's X-E-N-U and you can find whatever you want to know about that. I'm not going into more of it on this section right now because it's just weird. Moving on to number two. Hubbard spent time in a black magic cult. It is not a black magic cult. This is going to make me lose my ever-loving mind. First, it is a pagan religion. 
Not all pagan religions practice black magic. One. Two, he was not a part of it. Three, stop with the bullshit, okay? One, Hubbard, before he wrote Dianetics, before he started Scientology, before any of that, right after he got out of, well, right when he was on leave from the military, right before he got out of the military, he was living with Jack Parsons, and Jack Parsons was part of Orondo Tempelli Oritios, or OTO, which was a group that followed the teachings of Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley is very big in pagan religions. A lot of Aleister Crowley's teachings have broken down into forms of Wicca that are practiced today. A lot of different New Age religions. They are not all black magic, and Aleister Crowley did not preach black magic. L. Ron Hubbard never actually formally joined the group. Now, he did do some of the circles with them, and he did do a, a, um, a religious type thing with Parsons. But it was not a formal thing. He was not a part of the group. And Parsons had to ask Crowley for permission to tell Hubbard secrets about the group. Moving on. Stop always grouping all of us pagans into one big group. Not all of us believe in black magic. That kind of grinds my gears a little bit. Moving on. Number three, members were allegedly thrown overboard as punishment. That is actually true. Uh, this part came from, um, from a Hannah Whitfield who was on board as a Sea Org member. <coughs> when they were originally on the ships, Hubbard was known to as punishment through his like ethics office that he created on board. When somebody did something wrong, he would take them up to the highest point of the ship and throw them overboard as part of their punishment. That has been documented by several people that were on ship with Hubbard during those years. Uh, the, there's different stories out there all over the place. Um, so you could find different stories about it all over the place. So that is also one of those that, yeah, that kind of stuff happened. Uh, number four, Hubbard told his second wife that he murdered their daughter. Now, this is not a story I've ever heard before. Um, this is when he was married to Sarah Northrup. That's his second wife. She threatened to leave LRH if he didn't get psychiatric help, which I can see why she would do such a thing. He kidnapped their daughter, Alexis, in a response to her threats. And then he told her that he cut Alexis into pieces and dropped her in the river. He then called her back and told her that her daughter was alive and well. Um, yeah, you're just pushing that narrative that you need psychiatric help even further. Just saying. Number five, there was a Scientology there was a Scientology prison camp. I don't know why she wrote that as a past tense because there is a Scientology prison camp. Uh, this came from Sylvia Spanky Taylor. Um, Sylvia was the liaison between the church and John Travolta. And she was sent to the Rehabilitation Project Force, also known as the RPF, and she describes it as a prison camp where you'd be reindoctrinated. And she talks about how people were forced, forced to do hard labor for 30 hours on, three hours off. They would eat table scraps and sleep on dirty, wet mattresses. None of that surprises me. I've heard horror stories about things that go on at RPF, so none of that surprises me in the least bit. 
Moving on to the FBI raid of the church. This occurred on July 8th of 1977. The FBI raided two locations of Scientology. The first one was the Scientology Los Angeles location. The other one was the Washington DC location. They actually hit those at the same time. And they recovered so much material about the things that Scientology was doing against the mayors of Clearwater, against reporters, um, how they were doing illegal activities, all kinds of things. And that was considered to be the Bureau's biggest raid ever at that time. Uh, the church, number seven, the church stole government documents. Again, yes. Um, in the 70s, many Scientologists were directed to get jobs in the government, especially like the Department of Justice, IRS, and the reason why they were directed to do so is so that they could skip, steal documents that were related to the church and investigations on the church and bring them back to the church. Again, am I surprised? No. Number eight, the church apparently has a blackmail folder on John Travolta. Am I surprised? Again, no. Um, John Travolta is, has, a, it's alleged that John Travolta asked to have his sessions not recorded. Um, it's also alleged that there were secret cameras that were hidden anyway, and they have compiled a blackmail folder on him. Uh, given the fact that the people that have left Scientology now have these, like, funky websites up with all this, like, not true material up against them, doesn't surprise me that they may have a blackmail folder against John Travolta. I'm sure they also have one against Tom Cruise. Just saying. Uh, the church investigates the IRS. That's number nine. This is true. Um, there have been several IRS agents that were a lot that were IRS agents during that time that have come out and said this. Um, this was during the point where the church was trying to get their tax exempt status back, and so the church was battling the IRS. Uh, church, Scientologists were filing lawsuits against individual IRS employees that totaled 2,400 individual lawsuits against individual IRS employees. There were also private investigators that were going to IRS conventions and following around IRS employees. And David Miscavige told the IRS commissioner, hey, you give us that tax exempt status and all of this goes away. So in October 1993, they got their tax exempt status and all of it did go away. So they just bullied the IRS into getting what they wanted and they got what they wanted. So number 10, Tom Cruise and the church allegedly, alleged, uh, allegedly wiretapped Nicole Kidman's phone. Am I surprised by this? No, I also believe that this is what led to him and Nicole Kidman splitting up. Um, the church didn't like the fact that Tom Cruise was pulling away from the church while he was married to Nicole Kidman. And I do believe that they wiretapped her phone and then maybe even made up some stuff. And that is what led to their divorce. Number 11, Cruz may have the employees pimp his cars for 40 cents an hour. Sea Org members do not make a living wage. This is well documented by everybody that's a former Sea Org member. They can tell you they do not make a living wage. And it is said that Tom Cruise is well aware of it. Everybody's well aware of it. I mean, anybody that has ever seen anything on Scientology is well aware of the fact the Sea Org members do not make a living wage. So it's, it's stated that Tom Cruise has had the Sea Org members pimp out his cars, his motorcycles, hook his house up with audio visual equipment. I mean, he's using these people as his own personal slave labor and he knows they don't make anything. And does he care? No, because he gets what he wants. 
Number 12. The Church of Scientology found Cruz a new girlfriend. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they did. Because it's also been put out there that he's had people interviewed to be his girlfriend. So, while he was in Spain, someone overheard him complaining that he needed a new girlfriend. And so, this Church of Scientology jumped in line, found a young Scientologist by the name of Nazim Bonadi. I, I suck at pronunciations. They had her braces removed, bought her $20,000 worth of clothes, and colored her hair to Cruz's liking. And she was told she'd be Cruz's girlfriend, but the relationship soon ended, and she signed a non-disclosure agreement with the church. Since then, her career has taken off. She has been in shows like she's been in movies like Homeland and Iron Man, among other films and TV shows. So things worked out for her, but she also had to go through a transformation just to be his girlfriend. For a short-lived period of time. Paul, Number 13. Paul Haggis left because the church's homophobic status. That is true. He left during... I can't remember what the proposition was in California. But it was against gay marriage. He has a gay daughter. He also works in the film industry. He works with gay actors and actresses all the time. And he found out that the church was backing the anti-gay marriage proposition and ended up leaving. Number 14, Scientology's book value is approximately $1.5 billion. Tony Ortega actually obtained recent tax documents that showed that and they're using that money to do whatever they want because they're tax exempt so they can do whatever they want. Number 15, Sea Org members are allegedly tortured with the sounds of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. They are forced to. This was back in 2004 at the Gold Base. The people that were in the hole that were, you know, these high level uh, members of Scientology, while they're being just horrendously tortured and put down and downgraded like one man was ordered to mop the bathroom floor with his tongue another method of abuse was they were forced to play musical chairs to bohemian rhapsody those participating were fighting to stay in the church whoever didn't have a seat when the music stopped was expelled from the church I think I'd rather go Number 16, if members leave the church, their friends and family are forced to disconnect, and we see this all the time. This is one of the biggest problems with the Church of, of Scientology is the breaking up of friends and family, the tearing down of support systems, and the complete wrecking of homes. So let's, at, here at the end, let's move over to the last Huff Post. This is the HuffPost.com. This was posted January 28th of 2015. Scientology reps slam going clear after well-received Sundance debut. This was written by Christopher Rosen. And this is what the Church of Scientology had to say about going clear. The church has documented evidence that those featured in Gibney's film regurgitating their stale, discredited allegations are admitted perjurers, admitted liars, and professional anti-scientologists whose living depends on the film of the fil of the filing of false claims. All have been gone so long from the church; they have n they know nothing of it today. Now, let me stop right there. This movie was based off of a book first. So everything that was in the book was written soon around the time these guys got out of Scientology. So some of these guys got out around 2004. I don't know when this book was posted, was printed. Let me look that up real quick. I, I don't want to misstate things. Let's state true facts. So when was going 
clear. Written. Going Clear was published January 17th of 2013, which means you have to have written it beforehand. So he was gathering all of these stories beforehand. So all of this was relevant. Going back. Yet Gibney and HBO stonewalled more than a dozen requests by the church to offer relevant information about them, with more than 25 individuals with first-hand information eager to speak. To this day, neither HBO nor Gibney can deny that they have yet to present the church with a single allegation from the film so that the church may have the opportunity to respond. The church never sought special treatment, only fair treatment. So here we go again with the same... Thing that they do with Leah's show, that they do with every documentary that comes out with them, with every TV show that comes out against them. They never put out their own thing. They just always put out this, well, we had no reason, we had no ability to respond. We had all these people ready to say something against them. Blah, 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 blah. It's the same thing all the time. It's like copy, paste, cry, wolf behavior. I, I guarantee you I can go back on Leah Remney's A&E page and take one of their responses from the church and put it side by side with this response right here from the church and it damn near be word for word except for they're putting in Gibney's name and film and for Leah Remney and show. Because it's the same thing over and over and over again. They want to cry and whine any time somebody says something against the church. But if you weren't doing these despicable things, if you weren't doing all of these horrible things, nobody would have anything to say against you. Nobody has anything to say against individual churches out there, ever. Yes. People have things to say against Catholic, the whole Catholic hierarchy, higher, hierarchy, I cannot talk today, the Catholic hierarchy for what they do about covering priest ass for raping children. But they don't attack individual Catholic churches because it's not happening at every Catholic church. Now you have the fundamentalist Baptist that people like, you know, people like Westboro and shit like that that are doing some really heinous, retarded crap. And people say something about them. But they are not attacking every individual Baptist church because it's not every individual Baptist church. With the Church of Scientology, every individual Scientology church is doing the same damn thing. You do the same thing. You are robbing people of their money when they are just trying to find their own path in this world. They're trying to find a simple truth that they've not been able to find anywhere else. And you sell it to them like you've got it. But then you rob them of every single penny that you can get out of them. And then when somebody starts pointing out everything that you do wrong and how you rob people of their money, then you want to give your copy-paste crying statement about how nobody wants to hear you out and how everybody wants to accuse you of this, that, and the other. But you don't ever want to actually come on film and say, nobody ever hears David Miscavige set his ass down in front of a camera and say a word. Why not? Are you too scared? That's going to do it for me today, guys. I've covered four articles today. We've, we've gone over how David Miscavige's estimates and how his address manager estimates are not making clear sense and how David Miscavige's little pet projects have pushed his missions to put up GoFundMes to beg the 
general public for money to make them go ideal. And then the last two are about going clear and how there are 16 shocking allegations from that movie that people were just so shocked to see, but thus watchers of Scientology and even former Scientologists are not that shocked about. And then, of course, Scientology's crime general, oh my God, you don't listen to us, copy-paste response to everything that attacks them. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and ring that bell. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of this video. And in the, com uh, in the description box down below, guys, will be my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and my email account. Let me know, guys, if there's anything you want to hear about. I've got a laundry list of other articles that I have got to get through and start getting some more content up for you guys. And I promise I will get on that. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me today. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.